Teams at the MCG last night, and if you're a Demons fan, well, get around them. Yeah, they were very good again. I thought the Bulldogs started quite well, but it was just the easy goals that Melbourne kicked, the ones they got out the back, and particularly the ones they got out of the front of the stoppage again. So think back to that grand final. Oliver uh, Petrarca coming out the front of the stoppage, and it happened again last night. Petrarca just rolled out the front of the stoppage. That's as easy a goal from end to end as you get. The Bulldogs tried something. They, they went tall in the defensive end. They went tall in the midfield, but again, they struggled to defend through the midfield. Field. And Melbourne kicked some very, very easy goals where the dogs really scrapped for theirs. They were in the game for a long time, but the easy goals told in the end. When there's no Stephen May, you occupy Jake Lever. But Lever had 21 disposals and took nine marks. So I just want to show, say, for Jamara Hagen, their coaches should be teaching him uh, today, tomorrow, how to play a smart player like Jake Lever. So look at this. He's running to spots too early. So all Jake Lever says is the ball's not going to go there. I'll sag off. So this one. What's he doing this high when the ball, when Lever's back here? So he's leaving his position far too early. You must occupy him for as long as possible. That ball can't be kicked out into the corridor, so Lever leaves him and takes a mark. So a real uh, educational night for Jamara Hagen. We'll discuss the tall forwards at the Western Bulldogs. It didn't work. I don't think Luke Beveridge can go with those talls again. Even though it's only round one, it just can't work. You've abandoned the plan yeah, now. I reckon in the history of the game, we've seen uh, I think Bradshaw, Brown and Lynch work. I don't think we've ever seen more than th three hardly works. So to go with... You've spent a whole off-season gearing... I I'm not sure. Long, yeah, here, here we go pass. now. So uh, to me, I would send Sam Darcy to the back line. I don't think their back line's that good either. So Josh Bruce potentially could not play in this side. He's a little bit too slow, I think. And could you, Kane or Brownie, what do you think? Send Darcy back where I reckon he could be a star. I'm not sure how dominant he'll be as a forward this early in his career. Yeah, he exploded there when he went into the team last year, that first game at Marvel. Six in a set mark. So that's the luxury they have with Sam Darcy. They can throw him back. Yeah. I'm not sure they can throw the other guys back as much as so it's nice to have that luxury of putting him back if they need to but the, you, you wouldn't persevere for another week they've got St Kilda next week they probably will but uh, I just think that if you can't beat Melbourne with four players out and that was a real issue for them you no know Cody Waitman hurt them Arthur Jones was out as well so they didn't really have the pressure at ground level either Kane Michael Christian's got his work cut out for him the match review officer uh, I don't think it's clear cut TJ I mean this is as vicious an incident as you're going to see for, well for a long time like, it, that's a human missile there Cosy Pickett launching himself really dangerously he chooses to bump he leaves the ground and he launches uh, and he's really lucky demo that Bailey Smith got up. Now, yeah. in the tribunal guidelines, usually they are very lenient if there is no injury. Now, yeah. fortunately, there was no injury. What yeah. does it say? Well, it comes down to intent, as always, and whether it's careless or intentional. And given it was in play, it's probably going to be the careless, which will get it down to one week. But we're at a, a period of this game where there is a raft of litigation now hitting yes. the game with it. And there may well be an argument that, that the intent on that within play, albeit, that that was worse than, than some other right. instances you see when it's out of play. And as such, I'd be surprised if he's not out for two weeks, given, well, given that. I'll ask you a question, Damo. Yep. Does Michael Christian have the ability to override the point system and say, OK, we're going to ban the action, mm. not the outcome? This is the perfect example, round one. And you don't want to see anybody miss a game. But do you ban the action? And does he have an override button where he goes, well, it doesn't, one week doesn't fit. It's a really good does point, it, Brownie. Does it become three weeks on my override button? No, it's a really good point. He will be bound by what he's got in front of him. But the AFL can ultimately do whatever it wants to do. And as we've come to know with concussion, it's not just the impact of, this, of the concussion itself. It's the repetitive head jolting, which, which Smith clearly suffered as, a, as some form. So we'll know later today. Um, speaking of head hits, uh, Liam Jones, who's the big recruit from the, the Bulldogs' perspective, uh, friendly fire, to use that footy phrase, where Josh Bruce got him in the second quarter. It, it, um, it got him on the neck, and he left the ground and did not come back in. And as we speak, we don't know how long he's going to be out, but some distressing scenes given we uh, didn't know what was going on there at the moment. We now know it's a, a neck injury and uh, and one that obviously throws the Bulldogs even further into disarray, Lordo, with those, uh, those big yeah, men that they've got.